Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and this is Kat Budgets and today we are going to be doing a budget with me. Oh my god, it's been so long but I'm wicked excited to do that with you guys on camera. It's literally been so, so, so long the last time that I did a budget with me. So if that is content that you are interested in watching, then let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, y'all. So as you guys might recall from my last video, I did mention that I won paper by Mo's giveaway over on her YouTube channel. And I actually won her Mo Budget Less Problems Planner. So paper by Mo. Um, I did link her in the description and I will link her in this video as well. So I'm super excited to get started with this and show you guys pretty much how I budget my paycheck every single month. I do get paid on a monthly basis. So I guess my monthly budget is my budget by paycheck <laughs> budget. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move this candle over a little bit just because I just wanna make sure I have the sufficient space over here. So let's get started. I'll probably fill some of these out after, but this is such a beautiful planner, the way that it's put together, the paper is thick. Ugh, I'm obsessed with how it came out. All right, let's see where to start so um this is a monthly layout so i'm just gonna skip over this for now and then maybe if you guys are interested i can put this out on camera afterwards but i'm going to do a paycheck budget here all right so i'm gonna flip this and i do write sideways i hope that's okay with you guys let me grab my pen this is paycheck number one which is my only paycheck because like i mentioned before i only get paid once a month and i do work in private equity i work in um, accounting and the accounting department in my firm so that is where my monies come from and i live in massachusetts and i work in boston so just as a point of reference as you guys may or may not know massachusetts is a state that has a very high cost of living um so just keep that in mind and also i did graduate with my bachelor's a couple years ago you know some a couple things to just keep in mind regarding my budget just remember that no two budgets are ever alike and yeah just wanted to throw a couple of those disclaimers all right so i guess in my times growing up i don't know i would consider myself mid-income i don't consider myself low income so i'm just gonna um put how much i got paid all right so i'm gonna Put my income here i'm gonna put it under budget even though i already got paid so i'll just put it under budget so the total that i received for the month is four thousand five hundred and seven dollars and 83 cents so that is how much i got paid from my job um and i actually have that money get dispersed through different accounts so this is the first time that i'm using a planner like this i typically have my um my budget set up differently because i use stickers but i'm sure it's very similar to this all right so the first thing that we're going to start off with is actually my mortgage so as you guys recall i did buy my condo last year and i do live with my boyfriend so some of the expenses are split so just as, as another point of reference and let's see that's always due on the first and my payment for that is actually i'm going to put under actual it's 15, 10, and 54 cents. That's how much I pay. All right, next is going to be my cell phone. And I pay around 50 for that, and I'll put that under budget, and I usually pay that on the 10th. Next, I'm going to do home insurance. I don't pay for my in home insurance through my escrow account. I pay it separate because it technically wasn't required even though it is required. I'm not really sure, but that's usually due on the 20th, I believe. And the total for that is $49.50. And then my car insurance is due on the 10th. And that is $118.50. Next, I'm gonna do my Apple subscriptions. And I currently pay 2247 for those and that is always on the first of the month so i actually pay my apple storage my apple music and my apple care for my phone and the total for that is 2247 i do also pay for spotify and that is due i believe on the 9th of the month 
something around that, and I pay $10.99. That's actually bundled with Hulu, so that's nice. Next is going to be my gym membership, and that is due on the 15th of every month, and that is $29.99. So next is going to be my medical co-pays, and let me finish writing that in. I accidentally put 50, but for this month, it's actually going to be 100. And let me, I know it's not aesthetically pleasing. I don't know where my whiteout is, but I'm just gonna put 100 because that's how much I anticipate to pay for um, co-pays this month. All right, that's all that I have for fixed expenses so far. Next, I'm gonna go down to debt, which are a couple of the debts that I pay or owe each month. So I do pay for a Wells Fargo credit card and this is due on the 28th of the month and the budget is $85 so my boyfriend and I split this we each pay $85 it's for some furniture that we bought and it's zero percent interest so I don't mind it it's debt but honestly I don't really care for it because it's gonna be paid for soon and I'm splitting the expense I just yeah I, I finance furniture it's not a big deal to me all right next for debt is going to be my Nell net student loan and that's due on the 28th as well of every month and the minimum for that is $132.15 then I have my other um, student loan which is through the university account services servicer and that is due on the 5th of every month uh, well that's when I withdraw it and the total that I pay for that is $270 all right, next I'm going to pay off some debt that I did add to my credit cards last month. So I don't carry a balance on my credit card. Um, if I use my credit card, I always pay them off. I don't have any credit card debt. If I do have a debt that like carries on to the next month, it's usually no interest and I usually pay it within the next month. So yeah, I don't carry any balances on my credit card. I learned my lesson with credit cards. So yeah, any balance that you ever see me putting on a credit card, it just means that I... Um, swiped and I might have forgotten to pay or I anticipate to just pay it off within the next month Which was the case for April April was a very expensive month for me because I ended up buying the flights for my boyfriend and I for our cruise So it was just a very expensive month. I do owe one of my credit cards some money and that was my built credit card And I owe I'm gonna pay that as soon as my mortgage goes through um, I owe 260 on that credit card and you might be wondering what do you mean you put your mortgage on your credit card The built rewards credit card is an amazing credit card because um, I actually got this credit card when I was renting and I was living in one of those nice apartment complexes that allows you to pay your rent on an online portal the credit card actually provides you with an account number and a routing number and it's really cool because then you use that account number and routing number to go online and pay for your um, for your rent um, if your landlord doesn't have an online portal and prefers check, the credit card actually sends a check on your behalf to your landlord, which is pretty cool too. You just write the amount and the, and the address that you're paying your rent for. So I got that credit card last year when I was renting. And the cool thing is that luckily my mortgage servicer allows me to pay for my rent with the account number and routing number that the built rewards credit card gives me so i have my mortgage on auto pay it automatically gets charged to my built rewards credit card and then i go in and just pay off my credit card every single month um but then last month like i mentioned i bought a ticket like the day the statement closed or the day a couple days before the statement closed so it was 260 and i just didn't have a chance to pay it so i have to pay myself back for that it was a ticket that i paid to go see bad bunny super nice that was actually my sister's ticket so yeah if you guys haven't heard or or checked out the built rewards credit card i strongly encourage it if you're a renter i freaking love the credit card um it is an amazing credit card but i will say that it is mostly for people who like to travel because it allows you to accure travel reward points i think it's an amazing card i love it i seriously love it i paid for um my flights to go to san francisco when i went to go see my sister i used my my credit card travel points from built and that was what paid for my trip so i love this credit card i strongly encourage it it's free it has no annual fee the only caveat is you have to use it five times within a month i always have that linked down below in all of my descriptions for all of my videos so if you guys are interested in that credit card definitely check it out and i have a referral let down below another credit card that i added money to because i just needed things 
was my Bank of America credit card and I already paid this off, but I had a balance of two nineteen and 10 cents. And I think that's it for debt for now. Um, I know that I owe my stepdad the $10,000 that I'm constantly talking about and that's what I'm saving up for, but I'm using savings for that and then I plan to just take the savings out of the envelopes and then pay my stepdad. So I'm not gonna count it as debt, I'm gonna count that as savings. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, that's all that I have for debt for now. And then next I'm gonna go into my variable expenses. So the first one that I'm going to do is actually work food. So like I mentioned, I work at a firm and this is not applicable, so. And I budget $150 a month for my work food. So what does that mean? So my firm actually has an in-house cafeteria. So we have um, staff that are chef and they cook food for us. They cook lunch, breakfast for us every single day. They're the sweetest people ever. Um, they, it's a great team. They're all very kind and they make us food for the firm every single day. And it's a different meal. It's really nice because you just never know what we're going to eat for lunch. And it's really fun. And the food is actually really good. So luckily our firm doesn't charge us that much money for lunch. Lunch is like $7 and we get like a whole plate of food, which is pretty cool or like a salad or whatever it is that you want. And then in the mornings they'll have like free coffee. They have a cold brew. I usually buy like a little espresso shot because I like espresso. I like lattes and then I just add milk to it. So I usually buy an espresso shot and then they'll have fresh fruit or oatmeal or a variation of an egg. So it might be scrambled. It might be boiled. It might be, you know, a couple different options, but that's what they have every morning. So I budget 150 for my work food. But yeah, that's just um, why I budget for that. I actually have this go into like a completely separate different account. And then I always pay with my uh, either Apple card or my American Express card. And then I just pay myself from that account for my work food. I don't typically spend 150 in the month because I only go through two to three times a week to work. So typically what I do do is sometimes I use the remaining money to like go out to eat like you know, get a coffee or like some froyo or sushi somewhere or something. So yeah, that's what the 150 is for. Next is going to be laundry. So like I mentioned, I bought my condo, but we have laundry downstairs and we have to pay to use it. And I give myself a budget of $25 every single month for laundry. I don't sometimes use all of that money. Um, okay, next is going to be gasoline for my car. And that is going to be 130 that I budget. So my boyfriend and I are currently sharing a car. I haven't been really pumping gas, but sometimes I do like to help him because gas for my car is expensive and he drives it every single day. So sometimes I'll chip in and help him with that, but I do budget 130 for gasoline for my car. Then we have beauty, which is when I get my nails done, when I get waxes done, I budget $125 a month and that should last me for my nails which i get done every three weeks and my wax which i get once a month next we're gonna go to my savings and this month i anticipate saving 450 dollars so this is gonna go towards savings challenges and i'm budgeting 455 so i'm gonna go ahead and add all of these off camera and i will be right back all right, I realized I forgot that this is 118 and 58 cents, not 50. So the total down here is, let's see, $1,892.07. So then if I subtract that from my check, 4507 and 83 minus 1892.07, we have remaining 2615.76. Okay, then let's add up these numbers and all right, then here the total is 966.25 going towards debt and then if I subtract that from 2615.76 minus 966.25 we have 1649 and 51 cents remaining so then let me add up the variable expenses. Okay, my variable expenses are $430. So then if I subtract 1649, 51 minus 430, we have 1219 and 51 remaining. And then here the, the total for savings is 455. So then, then if I subtract 455 from there, we have a total of 
$764.51 remaining. All right, so you're probably wondering, Kat, what is that $764.51 remaining? Guys, that's actually my spending money. Because, you know, realistically, honestly, like, I need money to spend. Like, I, I want to be realistic with myself. I also feel like I work hard. And I just want to make sure I get to enjoy a little bit of that. I feel like $700 for this month is pretty okay. Honestly, this is a bigger check than usual because I actually pay for my train and for parking for me to go into the city to go to work. But um, I actually have enough money on my credit card that my job gives me to pay for my passes because I pay for my passes pre-tax. Hopefully that makes sense. So my job gives us the benefit to pay for our train and parking if we need to at the at the train station. So I, I'm, I'm allowed to take that money out of my check pre-tax and then they load that money onto a credit card. They actually pay like $110 for the train. So that's actually really helpful because I live far and the train is more expensive for me. So I actually opted out for this month. So this is what I would be getting paid every single month if I didn't pay for parking for the garage or for my train tickets. But I typically do, and usually my paychecks are around 4,400. So just to be realistic there. I also wanna be realistic when it comes to my mortgage. So I mentioned that my mortgage is 1510, but if you guys watched my video from last year when I bought my condo, I mentioned that I was I qualified for this amazing program and I actually get a subsidy every single month which is around $154. So 15.10 is my portion including the subsidy. So like if I were to be paying the subsidy every single month. So what I do is that because I'm getting a discount that 15.10 is including $154 that I put into a savings account. So when I am ready to refinance my condo or I want to sell they're gonna ask me for the money that they've paid me every single month through the subsidy. They're gonna ask for that money back. So because they're gonna ask for that back, I don't want that to be a deterring factor for me whatsoever. So I've just been saving $154. So in reality, I pay less than uh, than this for my mortgage because 154 and 71 cents is actually going towards a savings account. So just to be realistic there and transparent. So yeah, typically my, my income is $4,400. But because I am sharing a car with my boyfriend, um, I've been taking like Ubers and stuff like that on, on when I come home sometimes. So yeah, that's just why I wish I was getting this every single month, but you know, it is what it is. So typically my spending money is much less than this. It's like $600. I think one time it was like 550. So yeah, just some transparency there. But this is what my paycheck budget is. I'm sorry, I hope that this makes sense. Oh, I realized I didn't put the date on here but I get paid once a month and I usually get paid on the first or the first business day. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you guys might have. I hope that this made sense. And again, like I mentioned, I live in Massachusetts. I work in Boston. So don't get discouraged if the numbers that I have don't reflect your budget because we're gonna be different people. We live in different cities. We live in different states. So just as a reminder, I may not have credit card debt. Like I have some debt here, but again, that was just money that I know that I spent that I was gonna pay back. So this is just me taking from my check. Like, hey, make sure you pay off this, but I don't carry balances on my credit card. So just as a reminder there, I know some people have credit card debt and that might make your budget look different. I have a lot of student loan debt. I have $66,000 of student loans. And then the savings challenge, like I'm saving $455 this month, but that's also going towards a debt that I owe my stepdad. So, you know, just things to keep in mind. Don't get discouraged if my budget doesn't look the same as yours. And that's totally okay if it doesn't. All right. I hope that made complete sense to you guys. If you guys have any questions, please, please leave them down below like I mentioned before. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. They are both cat budgets, C-A-T budgets. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I am trying to grow my cat budgets fam. We're growing here slowly but surely. I'd really appreciate it if you would stay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys on my next one. Bye guys.